Well, my name is Erica Woodland. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I'm the founding director of the National Queer and Trans Therapists of Color Network. And we are a healing justice organization whose not so secret mission is to organize and politicize mental health practitioners from our community. Um, and I am a proud member um, of this community and have been working with queer and trans folks of color um, for more than 20 years in a lot of different contexts. Nice. First start by saying that in terms of how I navigate my own healthcare, I work with a lot of different practitioners. Um, who are actually operating outside of the traditional Western medical system. Um, and it's one of the challenges that I'm currently facing as someone who is aging, although I look rather young, um, is that I find it's really hard to be in an empowered relationship with practitioners in the mainstream health system. So even if you know I'm going to an environment where it's supposed to be trans affirming or trans competent, um, there's a, a lot of power dynamics that I don't actually experience with my acupuncturist or my body worker. Um, and so I do think there's this way that as practitioners in that context, we really have to think about um, the power that we wield. And even when we are trying to transform the culture and systems to make them more aligned with our values around trans liberation, um, you know, the way that that system is set up, it's, it's pretty dehumanizing and disempowering. So, you know, I, I often um, have to come in with a lot of kind of my advocacy <laughs> warriorship to ensure that I'm listened to and that, you know, that folks really hear what I'm saying about my own body. Um, and I've, you know, been able to get care in environments where folks are actually super trans affirming, but the kind of larger pressures of the healthcare system where you get two and a half minutes with your practitioner, um, make some of that kind of human contact super challenging. There's the trauma of the, our current experiences, and then there's the legacy and generational trauma of a system that was not set up for us. Um, it was not set up for trans people, queer people, Black, Indigenous people of color, sick and disabled people. It's a very violent system historically. Um, and as someone who, you know, um, as a therapist works in conjunction with and alongside that system, um, I think it's really important to think about the history that we're also super aware of, the history of experimentation on our communities for sterilization, um, and that actually a lot of our folks are experiencing medical abuse even in, um, in those one-on-one -on -one interactions with providers um, because consent is not central. So when I think about this conversation around trauma, it, it actually reminded me that often when I go to the doctor, my, they take my blood pressure and it's super high because I don't, because I'm afraid of being there because I don't want to be there because I know the experience um, that I've had in the past in this life. And I also know the experiences of my ancestors in that system um, and our ancestors in that system. So to really also hold as a practitioner that, you know, someone might come in and maybe they haven't had really egregious or horrific experiences experiences, but that the system itself um, was really started and rooted in structural violence. Um, and we have to be accountable for that in the present. It's really exhausting. And I think at this point, I don't have a lot of patience because the information is out there. You know, if this were 20, 30 years ago, I'm like, everybody, Google is your friend. So <laughs> if, you're, if you work in healthcare, you probably have access to a computer, which a lot of people in the world don't, but you probably do and you probably have fast internet. So there are literally organizations out there that offer training for free, tools for free. Um, and I think for me as a non-binary trans masculine person, I'm like, you know, yeah, you have the pronoun signs up, good for you. I'm still getting misgendered and that doesn't, getting my pronouns correctly does not mean you understand the threats of violence that I have to deal with walking through the world, right, as a Black trans masculine person. And so I, I also want to kind of complicate the conversation on affirming care because I'm like, sure, affirm me, but like, are you going to be a co-conspirator and organize so that we can actually have collective liberation and you know, part of what we're doing at the network is is really supporting practitioners who want to play more of an active role in transforming the conditions instead of it being up to individual people to treat another individual person a little better. Um, you know, that's that's not sufficient. You know, our our people deserve the very, very best.